Josh Hennick here on 97.3 ESPN on a Tuesday, the day after Christmas. And joining me on the phone right now, you saw him during the 90s with the Detroit Lions. If you ever talk about Barry Sanders, people forgot about Herman Moore, the great wide receiver during the 90s. And he's joining us today on behalf of Quick Lane Tire and Auto Center. You have the Quick Lane Bowl today at Ford Field at 5.15 p.m. You can watch the game on ESPN. Herman, how you doing today? Hey, I'm wonderful. Thank you very much for having me. No problem. So let's first talk about this bowl. It's a very interesting matchup because Duke and Northern Illinois, not two teams you typically associate with big time bowl games, but it's actually an interesting matchup with two evenly matched teams. It is. You you have uh, Duke who is coming in off of uh, uh, winning their last two games to become bowl eligible, finishing six and six. And then you got Northern Illinois at eight and four. And uh, having a, a fairly a fairly decent season, and uh, two really exciting young quarterbacks on both sides, and then you got the Illinois uh, Northern Illinois defense, uh, which comes to the table that's going to create some havoc for the Duke Blue Devil offense. But uh, two teams that are familiar with going to bowl games, uh, Northern Illinois. Uh, out of the last ten years, they've gone to nine, with the exception of last year. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup. First time the two have met one another uh, in competition. So. It's always some fun things and uh, giving these, these young kids an opportunity to play one more game uh, to reward them for a good season. And, of course, Quick Lane is always ready to serve in today's Quick Lane Bowl. They'll award $10,000 scholarships to five veterans towards an automotive maintenance and repair certification as part of its trading one uniform for another program. I just take a moment to talk about that because that's a really cool concept. To, you know, you're not just helping people go to college, but you're helping people who have served this country. Yeah, we're we're helping our military veterans who are looking to transition uh, back over to civilian life after serving our country and protecting us and keeping us safe. And it's a great thing that Quick Lane Tire and Auto Center is doing uh, to offer them the opportunity for an automotive maintenance and repair certification with these scholarships. And uh, the fact that we're awarding five $10,000 scholarships uh, to them today, which we they, the process started about a few months ago, and now we're going to be announcing those winners at halftime during the bowl game uh, at the Quick Lane Bowl. So we're excited about that. We're excited to show our support uh, for our military uh, men and women who have served. And uh, this is a great cause and a great give back that goes beyond just the bowl games. We're talking with Detroit Lions legendary wide receiver Herman Moore, the three-time All-Pro, had three consecutive seasons with 100 catches. And Herman, when you did that in the 90s with Barry Sanders, you know that was kind of unheard of. You know, wide receivers didn't have the gaudy stats. It was basically a handful of you guys in the 90s, unlike today, where everybody seems to be getting stats. You know, talk about in your view the difference between the 90s and today when it comes to the wide receiver position. I think there was a sharp fall off of uh, running backs that were going to be competing at that 1,500 yard uh, per season uh, number. You know, it was the magic number was 2,000. You, you just don't hear him t anyone talking about hey, this guy has a chance at 2,000 yards, and this this guy is going to be rushing for 1,500 yard plus. Well, that was a, a common thing for us uh, finding those guys that could carry the load, uh, and then you had to complement them in the passing game with having those you know, 12 to 1,500 yard plus wide receivers. And it was a balanced attack, uh, whereas now it's just pass happy. And uh, the, the running backs are starting to make a little bit of a comeback, but it's still not at the level that we saw in the 90s and even into the 2000s to a certain degree uh, with some guys who had tremendous seasons and went on to be Hall of Famers. So it's, uh, it's transitioned definitely into a, a passing league and uh, uh, teams have, have adapted that on the defensive side as well as you've seen with uh, – guys who are no longer a true linebacker. They're linebacker slash defensive end rushers. You look at also today's wide receiver, Herman, you look at the fact that a lot of these guys, they're not as efficient at catching the ball as guys like yourself and the others in the 90s where, you know, it was the idea of if they threw the ball in your direction, you were going to catch it. You know, it doesn't matter right. where the ball was. Whereas today, a lot of these guys, you know, they're wearing the special gloves. They're having trouble watching the ball under their hands. Sometimes they're ready to run before the ball comes to them. You know, is that just something that guys are not, you know, working on their craft well enough? Do you think that guys are taking for granted the catching aspect of the game today? I think it's starting at the earlier side of it. Unfortunately, I mean, I go all the way down to the high school and collegiate level. 
uh, the attention to detail, what I like to call it, is not really there. So they come in, a lot of them, not necessarily with bad uh, habits, but it's just they're not as disciplined. Uh, they're not as uh, crafty as you find in, in the time when we played and even those before us because also you look at the technology advancement in the gloves. Um, they, they basically catch the football for you as long as you can get your hands near it. So when there is a drop pass, it's even more glaring. I mean, it shouldn't happen this frequently in the NFL. And, and guys are, I just don't think, are as, as um, disciplined in, in looking at the detail of it, of how to create that, that full um, suit of, of talent in terms of how they go out and they get things done. But right now, the NFL uh, has some players. I think the guys, are they have some tremendous athletic ability. Uh, but the focus, as you mentioned, I just don't think is there. Uh, and the, the respect for you know what they actually can bring to the game. The big debate in the NFL today is who is the best receiver a lot of times, and it's basically the conversation between Julio Jones, Antonio Brown, and Odell Beckham Jr. So, Herman, as a former NFL wide receiver, who is your top receiver and why? Uh, gosh, that that's a tough one. I always like to look at guys that do it over a period of time. Antonio Brown, I think you can make a case – for what he means, can he elevate his team? Uh, do they miss him when they're when they're gone? Uh, you know, they're, they're hard to replace. I think you find that with those guys you mentioned. When you look at AJ Green, you look at Julio Jones, you look at Antonio Brown, but also uh, Hopkins. I think uh, people forget about Hopkins um, out of uh, with the Texans. I think is a, a very good wide receiver, and you know, there are guys that will fall off a little bit as they get a little bit older. Uh, but right now, I think those those are the guys that are pretty much your safe bets uh, to go with uh, right now. And really, Antonio Brown just being a guy that can make it happen all all around, both underneath, over the top, in the middle. So he's he's really a complete guy, even though he's a little smaller player. You mentioned DeAndre Hopkins. This is the guy people saw the amazing catch he had versus the Steelers yesterday. But this is the guy who's had a plethora of quarterbacks. And, you know, you're someone that you had to go through a bunch of different quarterbacks during the 90s. What is that like for a wide receiver having to adjust every year to a different guy and sometimes two or three guys in season? Right. And that's really why I mentioned Hopkins because I I see some similarities in that I played with, uh, you know, 20 quarterbacks. And, when you you do that, you just cannot get that consistency you need in the rapport on a, a year in and year out basis, and sometimes not even for a season. And for him to have the consistency and be able to put up the numbers that he puts up means that he's doing the right things. That he is um, one of those players that he's got tools. He's adjusting to whatever's thrown his way. It doesn't matter who the, the person is because he's going to be disciplined in how he goes about catching the football, how he goes about running his routes. And, and that's what you want to see. You don't see a sharp fall off if one guy comes in and another guy uh, takes over. You know, you still have to produce. So uh, that's really one way you can really judge a really good wide receiver. We're talking with Herman Moore, the three-time All-Pro wide receiver with the Detroit Lions. He's here on behalf of Quick Lane Tire and Auto Center. It's the Quick Lane Bowl tonight at 515 Eastern at Ford Field. You can catch that game on ESPN. Herman, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about Barry Sanders. For me, I watched a lot of Lions games during the 90s because Barry is one of my favorite players of all time. He was just amazing to watch from college to the NFL. What is the one thing about Barry that, you know, people see a lot of the documentaries and the things on different networks, but what was the one thing about playing with Barry that most people don't know? Uh, Basically that, you know, Barry was a silent and quiet leader. I mean, he just didn't say a whole lot. He just did it through his actions. And that's something that, as a player, you respect. Uh, he's not loud. He, he doesn't brag. Uh, he just goes out and he gets it done year in and year out. And when you talk about a guy who averaged 1,500 yards a season for 10 seasons, that is a tremendous amount of consistency. And that's something you don't fake your way through. That's not anything you can make excuses. Uh, he didn't expect to have down years. And he had one year where he was injured. But even with that, uh, he was fantastic and phenomenal. Um, so when you talk about a guy like Barry, he's just a humble guy, uh, pretty bland, <laughs> he's just, but he's funny. And he has a tremendous sense of humor uh, that many people probably didn't know. How do you think those Detroit Lion teams of the mid-90s with you and Barry and Johnny Morton and Perryman and Scott Mitchell, how do you think you guys would have done in today's more wide-open game? 
Oh, it would have been it would have been great. Uh, even a guy like Barry would have still been a part. You look at the screens and you you start talking about getting him singled up with. You know, right now out of the backfield, a lot of these teams will just play the running back with one guy. Well, good luck with that. If Barry caught a screen pass and you had him locked up with a safety or a linebacker, that was a big. That's going to be a big play for us in the passing game. Uh, if you got us locked up to man the coverage with any of myself, Johnny Morton, or Brett Perriman, it was going to create a problem. And uh, today, and, and we had an opportunity to throw 45 times, 50 times a game, then we're going to do a lot of damage. I, I don't care what time. We played with a lot of guys. We played in the era when you had uh, you know, Atwater and um, Deion Sanders and all those guys. So we, we played with your Hall of Famers, your Daryl Greens. So it wouldn't be necessarily that, oh, it would be easier for us. And it was at a time when you get mauled at the line of scrimmage and that five-yard rule where any, anything basically goes, uh, you don't have that in effect today. And the middle was a place that you didn't want to hang out, whereas here, you know, safety's got to ease up a little bit. So it's it's different. We play with a whole different mindset. And I know a lot of the younger guys probably don't want to hear that. They think that, oh, the older guys are – Uh, trying to, you know, uh, kind of rain on their parade. But it's a little bit tougher, just like it was prior to us joining in the 90s. Those guys had a tough go in the 80s. You know, it was – they were out there taking some tremendous shots on the offense and defensive side of the ball. Herman, who's the one quarterback in the NFL today that you look at and say, man, I I would love to catch balls from that guy? Well, uh, Stafford definitely. Uh, I think he's matured when he was in his gunslinger days. Uh, he had an arm. He had all those things. But now he has touch. Uh, he has the ability to uh, find a way to make plays with his arm. Uh, he would have been a great guy to play with. I also like Drew Brees. I've always uh, enjoyed watching him as a quarterback. Just his, just the energy he brings and the leadership that he brings and, and, and when he's there. And then, of course, Aaron Rodgers. And I'm a little impartial to the NFC. Uh, but uh, watching him, I had a chance to watch a guy like Brett Favre, but uh, you look at Aaron Rodgers, he just has a lot more control. And I, you know, I can go with Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and all those guys. Those are easy, but these are some guys that I saw that I would be able to see on a, a regular basis. We're talking with Detroit, y- Detroit Lions legendary wide receiver Herman Moore. He's here on behalf of Quick Lane Tire and Auto Center. Quick Lane is always ready to serve. And at today's Quick Lane Bowl, they'll award $10,000 scholarships to five veterans toward an automotive maintenance and repair certification as part of its trading one uniform for another program again today, 5.15 p.m. Seattle kickoff at Ford Field, the Quick Lane Bowl, Duke versus Northern Illinois. Herman, before I let you go, just give folks the one thing you have people to watch for in this Duke Northern Illinois game. Well, you know, watch. Uh, I said the the both quarterbacks they have uh, two really good quarterbacks on both sides, and uh, Duke with Daniel Jones uh, that you can look at, and I, I think he's going to be a, definitely someone you want to pay attention to, and then also here for um, Northern Illinois. But the Northern Illinois defense. Watch after how these guys get after the quarterback and how they play the run. Uh, very good defensive unit. People can find out more at quicklane.com about Quick Lane's Ready to Serve program with the scholarships. Herman, I really appreciate the time today. Enjoy the games tonight and Happy New Year. Same to you, and thank you very much.